it's Nicole here for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. And today we're going to talk about die cuts. Which, a few little tips you can take to stretch your die cuts and add a lot of dimension to your page. Today I'm going to be working with the Flower Market Collection by Cartabella. It's a really pretty spring inspired collection. However, it's some, there's some lovely florals and patterns that are, would translate well into fall also. So I've just picked out a few different patterns of paper. I'm not going to use a lot of pattern paper on this layout, but I did pick out the sticker sheet as well as this ephemera die cut pack, um, just to add a few touches of color to the page and some things that I could layer in those die cuts later on. So I have my two photos here backed with foam adhesive, and I'm just going to start by sorting through my die cuts. What I like to do is I kind of just make two piles essentially one that's kind of more specific um, so if you have more of a, a spring theme page I would sort them into one side and as you can see here I've just sorted out some miscellaneous random things um, that kind of match everything that will go along with my photos I am tr trimming the little nubs off the edges of the die cuts just because that's one of my like pet peeves so I just take my scissors and trim off any of those little perforations that might be left on from the die cutting process and then I decided my white cardstock background was just a little bit too uh, plain. So I wanted to add just a hint of soft yellow to the background and not everywhere. So I'm using a scattered straw distress, distress oxide ink. And to be honest, I'm not doing a super great job with it. I was a little heavy handed there in that top right corner um, and had my, my blending tool a little too flat. You really need to hold your blending tool on an angle. Um, but we'll get more into that in another video. But I'm just adding, as you can see, just some sporadic touches of that soft yellow color. I just really want to have like a little bit of a yellow tone to some of the page. I don't want it to be completely stark white. And again, just draw in a little bit of that uh, really soft, soft yellow color. This is probably my, one of my favorite Distress Oxide inks, this color. Same with Distress ink. This color is just really good to add a subtle background to your project. So I've just blended some of that on. I'm just going to wipe off my background. And now I'm going to put my photos in place. Um, I'm going to trim down just a few strips of pattern paper for the top of my project and I decided to add a little bit more texture. I'm just going to actually rip those strips um, and, because these have a nice white core to the, this paper. So it's really nice effect when you just like rip across it. You can see you get that nice um, white inside. So I'm going to trim that down to a manageable size and I will layer them and I'm adding this little nice reddish pink polka dot along the top. And then I'll add my black and white stripe and that nice blue teal kind of floral pattern underneath. And that's just to get a nice variation of color along the top of the page. All right, so I think at this point, um, I'm pretty much ready to get my photos in place. Um, I know where I want to have them, and I decided to add a little bit of stitching along those rows, just to add a little bit of cheap texture. Sewing is a really easy, cheap and easy way to add a lot of texture to, to paper. So I'm just going to add a few rows of stitching. And then I'm going to go ahead and just take the foam adhesive off the back of my photos. And that's just going to start off by making the photos pop. So this um, foam adhesive that I'm using is by Thermoweb. It has a nice, thick, really in pretty dimensional texture to it. So the photos will really pop. They're a really higher profile foam adhesive. So now that I have the photos there, I'm kind of committed to where they're going to be. Um, I'm going to start playing around with my die cuts. I did cut down a 3 by 4 card from one of the pattern papers. Um, I don't end up using it in the end. It's really pretty, but it just doesn't fit with my design. So now I'm just working my die cuts. You can see I'm just trimming off the little nubs and trying to place them where I want to have them on the page. The first place where you can see I've placed die cuts is kind of in the intersection of where the two photos meet. That's just going to kind of fill in that area and clean up the gap between the two photos. So I have placed that black and white gingham um, die cut on the bottom on the base of my page and then I've popped up that word love here. I'm going to use some foam adhesive again for that and that's just going to fill in that gap between the two photos. So I'm going to line that gingham line up with my edge of my right photo there and then I'm going to add this circle just to kind of fill in that gap and it nicely overlaps the other die cut. So a lot of the die cuts when we put them down on the page here I'm going to overlap them and that's really just to create a symmetry across your project. Um, if you line them up in a grid that would be also super awesome um, but in a page like this where it's more of a collage like look having them overlap and you know fill in the gaps between each other is a really easy way to kind of have them blend together nicely now die cuts are great but you can also make your own die cuts and then i'm going to do that here by just punching out some of these super fun embroidery hoops from this pattern paper 
I'm using a one and three quarter inch punch because I want to get that kind of neutral brown um, from the embroidery hoop around the outside. And so I'm just kind of placing these on my page. Again, there's lots of foam adhesive on this project. That's just a really great way to add that cheap and easy dimension with pattern paper. So I'm going to kind of place these in two places. And then I decided I wanted a third one. I'm just sticking with the neutral kind of floral patterns. Um, and so I'm tucking those kind of in around the edge of my photo here with more foam adhesive. And so if I'm going to put one on each side of the photo in the top, uh, or sorry, the bottom left corner of the one photo, the bottom right corner of the other photo, and then one just kind of on an angle below it, just to make a little bit of a skinny triangle. I thought about using some of the cut aparts from that two by two square sheet, but they just didn't fit in with the room that I had left on my page. So I decided to go ahead and just skip that and just stick with the die cuts I'd already picked out. So I really like this frame one. It actually comes with another piece inside, but the piece inside that you can pop out was more of a garden theme. So I popped that out. Um, but I really like this one because a frame, you can always fill in the inside. It gives you some nice layering opportunities. So I'm going to go ahead and you'll see I move a few of my pieces around on my page. But that frame is really pretty and I wanted that pink to be a little more down on the page. So I'm just going to fool around a little bit here with some of the bits. But um, I am going to put that frame in that bottom corner of the page. And then I will add that little uh, pennant flag die cut also to kind of start the layering inside that die cut. And that little one I clipped off, I'm just going to notch upside down on my photo. And then I decided that um, I wanted to use some of the stickers, but I wasn't, you know, I really wasn't feeling some of them at this point. Um, so I decided I was going to do a little bit of fussy cutting, not a lot, but fussy cutting is another great way to add some dimension to your page. So I'm going to go ahead and just fussy cut three or four kind of little uh, floral clusters off of this patterned paper. And I'm going to use those onto my project. So I have started off here with this long leafy stem. I think that's going to look nice along that left hand side of the left hand photo just to add a little bit more length to it. So this one's a really easy one to cut out because it's really long and kind of skinny branch. So you can see I've done that. I've also cut out like this little rosette kind of cluster and a couple of the small little pink florals there. So I'm just kind of tucking them in, filling in any gaps from those die cut shapes. Um, and where the photos overlap. So there's really no seam from the photo over to the die cuts. There's really just lots of overlap. And that's just going to help everything kind of all meld together. But I still thought this needed a little bit more dimension. So another great way to add some dimension within your die cuts is to kind of expand on them. And the stamps that are that go along with this collection are perfect for that. They have some really fun leafy designs and floral designs, some really fun small images that are perfect to add to your background. So I just went ahead and I'm going to stamp some of that um, leafy pattern right around where I have my floral cutouts. So the florals that I've die cut, fussy cut, sorry. I'm just going to add a little bit of green ink to that floral design and stamp that in. I'm going to stick down all my fussy cut elements now that will fill in some of my gaps. And then there's some really fun hearts also in this stamp set. So I'm just going to add a few little hearts here with this raspberry ink by close to my heart. And there's another little mini floral um, that I decided I wanted to have in the black. I really wanted to draw just a little bit more of that black color in. This would look really pretty if you uh, watercolored that, that lined image. Um, but I decided, I had thought I was going to do that, but I decided against it because I really like the crisp black and white-ness um, of that. I'm just adding a couple little word details with yellow ink and some other little smaller hearts here in a little soft pink. I think this one's called Pixie. And I think that's it for the stamping, a nice just subtle, subtle way to fill in some of those areas. And so now I'm kind of back to my sticker sheet and trying to decide what I can use from there. I'm going to stick down my the rest of my floral shapes here, either with wet glue or foam adhesive. And you can see I'm adding one there along that top little pennant to fill in that frame a bit more. So I have a really fun sentiment sticker from the sticker sheet. So I'm going to add some foam adhesive to that. And I'm actually going to add that directly onto my photo. I can kind of see a line there on the bottom of that right photo. And I just wanted to fill that area in. So that's a really great spot to put that. And then I really like sticking tags along the top edge of my photos. You may have noticed that before. So I took one of the stickers here off the sticker sheet and just used that as like a um, little bit of a label behind the top of my photo. I also decided I needed a bit more yellow on this project. There's quite a bit of pink and that 
tealy uh, blue color. So I decided just to fussy cut like three tiny little yellow flowers from the pad, that same scrap of pattern paper. And I'm gonna add those just in amongst my die cuts here, just to, to finish off filling in some of those gaps I had talked about. Um, and it helps add a little bit more dimension too. So just a little, one little foam adhesive square to the back of each, and those are perfectly secured in place. And I know fussy cutting is not everyone's favorite, but I swear it's really one of my favorite ways to add a, a few little touches um, and details to any project really. Perfect for cards too. Okay, so I'm trying to decide, do we need more die cuts? I kind of feel like I need a bit of a title. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do at this point. I felt like it was missing something. So I added a few more little die cut hearts from that sticker sheet. And then um, one of the, there's a little pennant banner on that die cut sticker sheet too. So I just tucked one of those pre die cut um, shapes underneath to make another layer. Then I'm gonna add some enamel dots from this collection. I love it when you get a collection and everything kind of coordinates. You really don't have to think very hard because the company has done all the work for you. So I'm just gonna try to add a little pops of color um, that I'm missing. So some blue and yellow over in this corner here and then blue here down underneath my photo. That's just to kind of get help get everything all around. Decided to add a little bit more of that Distress Oxide ink just along the bottom edge of my page just to bring a little bit more yellow in. It was looking a little bit too white. Um, and I will fill in that area later with a stamped title that I will show you in the close-up section because I did not video that. Um, but I decided I wanted to add the yellow and then add a little bit more of that stitching that I did along the top row. I wanted to do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm just gonna quickly run this through my Janome sewing machine and just to add some more of that texture onto the white cardstock base. <clears throat> so really that's the majority of this project. You can see how all the layers of the die cuts just float naturally along, along each other. And that's kind of really what I wanted to do. Sometimes you just gotta let one project um, item just guide what you're going to do on your page. You can see all the different layers here, all the little dimensional pieces, things just tucked in each other, um, and really a page all about die cuts. Yeah, we did a little bit of fussy cutting. There's some stamping in there, um, but lots of nice and easy ways to add texture to your layout and dimension. Here is that stamp title I just added along the bottom of the edge of that page using some close to my heart stamps and inks. And that is it for this month's Designed with Nicole. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.